Another Saturday night shootout on the bluff in WCC men's hoops. The surging Portland Pilots hosting Pepperdine at the Child Center. Pilots, they've won four straight, and another victory puts them at 500 in conference play. Good evening, everybody. Ann Schatz joined by my broadcast partner and good friend, Jennifer Mountain, former Gonzaga great and head coach at Santa Clara. All right, J-Mo, let's break this thing down. UP playing its best basketball of the season. The Waves, they're young, they're banged up, but mm, they're dangerous. Oh, man, they really are. And they had Gonzaga on the ropes at Pepperdine on Wednesday. No fear, super aggressive, like you said, extremely young, but a lot of talent on this team and a team that's playing pretty well and dangerous. All right, Houston Millette, a freshman, and don't look at him as a freshman because this guy plays like a veteran. He's dynamic. Yeah, WCC Freshman of the Week had a great performance Wednesday against Gonzaga. Aggressive on both ends of the floor. He can create. He's got a great handle. Shoots the three. Has a great mid-range game and the complete package. Coach Romar says he is going to be special. They need a great game for him to steal one on the road. All right, so the Waves are 1-12 and 12 in conference play. What's it going to take for these guys to pull off a road win? Number one, taking care of the ball on the road. Super important. And then they've got to be able to guard multiple positions. Portland's guys, one through five, can play in different spots. Super important. And then transition. Got to make sure that they do a good job of getting back. And then lastly, rebounding is going to be a big factor. Let's talk about the hometown pilots. Moses Wood, he's been really good all season long and extra special good in conference play. Oh, man, he's been terrific in WCC play. Like I said, one through five, the kid can play all positions, scores in a variety of different ways, great three-point threat, but can get to the rim, handles the rock, a great Great rebounding guard who has been a matchup problem for people all season long. Pilots need a great performance on both ends of the floor for him to get one. All right, J-Mo, let's put your coaching cap on. What's it going to take for UP in terms of keys to a victory tonight? Well, I think a big thing is defending the paint, and that's something that they've keyed in on. Taking care of the basketball, continuing to shoot the ball well. Man, they have been hot from the perimeter the last few games, and then rebounding is always going to be a big factor. All right, it's go time here on the bluff. The Pilots going for their fifth consecutive executive victory and they're trying to do it at home the waves looking to spoil the run spoil the party lineups opening tip coming up next Senior night here at the Child Center. Just got finished honoring a trio of seniors and a senior manager here on the bluff. Jack Perry, Miles Turner, Wyatt Watson, and manager Andrew Betros. Special time for these guys. There's a good look at Jack Perry, obviously going down with that ACL earlier in the season, breaking a lot of hearts. I know it broke his. We're hoping. We're hoping he comes back next year, J-Mo.
I hope he comes back next year. You know, it's hard to end your, end your career on, on an injury like that. And plus, you know, just the momentum that this club has, I think he'd be a great addition. So we'll lay out for a few minutes and let the national anthem play here on the final home game of the regular season for the Pilots. Great crowd on hand here at the Child Center. As I mentioned, it's the last game, home game of the regular season for the surging Portland Pilots. Pepperdine in the house. Lots of fans on hand, and this could be a special night, JMO. Yeah, and it's parents weekend here on the bluff. I think we're going to have around 2,000, 2,500 people. So great student section tonight and expecting to be a great contest between the two. So Pepperdine coming in with that 1-12 and 12 record. As Jay Mo mentioned, you know, this is a club that's still very dangerous. They're really banged up, and I mean a lot of injuries that have affected this club, but there's this youthful energy that I know Coach Leggins can relate to as far as what Pepperdine will bring. Oh, you're, you're right, and you know, sometimes youth can be a, a really positive thing in the fact yeah. that they don't know anything better. So they're going to come out and compete. And like I said, man, I watched that Gonzaga Pepperdine game the other night, and they really played well. And, and I mean, I didn't expect to see them. You know, it was an eight-point game at one point in the second half. So uh, they got a lot of weapons, and they've got a really talented freshman group. All right, let's take a look at tonight's starting lineup. Pepperdine coming in at seven and twenty-one, one and twelve. The Pilots at fifteen and twelve, five and six. You know, we talked about Millet, the freshman, one of the veterans, though, of this club for Pepperdine. Jan Zedek has been playing really well. Yeah, I mean, he's the team's leading scorer and Czech Republic national team member. He does a lot for this group. You know, again, he's with this talented freshman group, but doing a great job, and he will be a big factor tonight. All right, Millet, the freshman for Pepperdine. Pepperdine, how about Chika Naduka, the yearling, the freshman for the Portland Pilots? He, in the last six weeks, has transformed this club. Since he started, I mean, it's just been a different ball club. He's undersized, but you would never know it with his heart and how hard he plays. And he's producing points. I mean, that's the bottom line is he's been really, really productive in the last six weeks. Pilots coming off of that really dominant victory over San Diego, 92 to 60. The Pilots led by 11 at half, J-Mo, and then just turned it on. 48 to 27 was how they outscored the Toreros in the second half. And they were on fire from the floor beyond the arc it didn't matter yeah shot the ball so well but i really thought their defense is what fueled what happened offensively you know they're really collectively shutting down lanes doing a great job of health defense and rebounding the basketball really well when you do those things you can run in transition you can get quality shots and like you said i mean they're just shooting the ball really really well as a group right now pepperdine waves coached by lorenzo romar fourth year second stint at pepperdine seven years overall with this club built washington in a, into a perennial contender for 15 years three-time conference of the year in that pac-12 pac-10 pac-12 and now with pepperdine again and he's a good one he is a recruiting guru he is i mean he's had tremendous success wherever he's been and just great development, too. And he's got a staff that's got a lot of experience as well. So good things happen for Pepperdine. We're underway. Pilots wearing purple and black. Pepperdine opening up the scoring in their orange jerseys. Zedek. And that's going to be a factor right there of point production for Pepperdine in the paint. They've got to do a good job of kitting him off the block. Robertson. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Now 10. Hedging is Zedek. Oh, good cut. Great cut and great look by Naduka. You know what I loved about that possession, Anne, is they were just patient, didn't panic, 
and just had great ball movement. That's the that's what they've done in the last few weeks. They have grown offensively and sharing the ball. Just getting great ball movement, as you mentioned, and movement off the ball. Zedek rimming out. Naduka, as Jen mentioned, what he has done in conference play is just remarkable. His number's good, but in conference, really good. Moses backing down his defender. It, and there's the size advantage right there. And you're going to see a lot of Portland's guards going in to post somebody up and just using mismatches because of their length. Good hands by Moses Wood. Got to tip my cap to number 14 for Pepperdine. Yoon making his first career start ever. The walk-on getting the nod. Jay Yoon, who played a career-high 12 minutes against Gonzaga, starting for the first time. That's awesome. Ooh, almost a turnover there. Millette doing a great job to Sky to keep it in Yoon's hands. Ooh, Wood. Wow, what a rejection. Crowd loving that. And they're going to take a look at the shot clock. Boy, have we had issues with that this season. <laughs> Man. Never fails. All right, Jen. I'm going to go back to the victory for the Pilots over San Diego the other night. They scored 92 points. How many points were scored by the starters? 90. Now think about that, people. Come on now. 90. I, I can't even believe I'm saying it, to be honest with you. I don't think I've ever seen a stat like that in Me my neither. life. And the starters playing 36, 38, 39 minutes and scoring 90 of the 92 points. Unflippin' believable. Austin wanted the travel. He's not going to get it. So Schoen will pick up his first, team's first. Well, unfortunate foul there because they had four seconds on the shot clock. Make him make a tough shot. Mitchell Jr. Shaken, bacon, elevating. Ball tipped to Robertson. Portland will go the other way, looking to extend the lead. We're doing a good job on the defensive board so far. Not allowing second opportunities for Pepperdine. Showland, who has been fantastic the last three, four games. Let's see if he can continue the hot hand. Inside look, Naduka. Thought he might have a reverse layup. Instead, it's Sholin rimming out, and here comes Pepperdine. I think you're right. I think Nanuka needs to take that shot, because then it just opens up the perimeter. Millette. He has been on fire lately. He had the 31 against BYU, 25 the other night against Gonzaga. Ooh. And there's the touch of Zedek. That was sweet. Four points now for Jan. He is starting to, now, yeah, when he got to Pepperdine, more of a drifting kind of a perimeter player. He's starting to camp on the low block, really gives a dual presence offensively to this Pepperdine bunch. I mean, that was like a, a like an old school hook shot. You can't that. was guard a pro that. move right there. Yeah. Robertson, you love this mismatch against Yoon. And scores. Good patience, just comes back over his left shoulder. Nice little jump hook. Four now for Mr. Triple Double. Here's Munson. Look at the quick hands by Naduka. Zedek is able to mop up. What a start for Jan. All six points by Zedek, and he has been active. Well, Portland doing a nice job of taking the ball away from Millette, but Zedek has just been terrific. Austin, who was so hot in that game against San Diego. Basket didn't want it. Six apiece. Pepperdine looking to take that lead. Great fake by Munson. Extra pass. Millette. There's the ball fake. He is quick. Boy, and elevates. He sure is. Yeah, he is just super quick. Listen, we know Holmgren's got freshman of the year wrapped up. We get that. But I'm telling you, Millette is one of the more dynamic freshmen in this conference. He really is. And you never know, Chica, right there behind yep. him all. So it's an 8-6 to six Pepperdine lead. Both teams shooting the ball well. Naduka. You know, I look at that kind of an award as the kind of impact they have on a program. And right on cue. <laughs> two-man game with T-Rob and Naduka. Eight to eight. The chick is saying, all right, Christian, get out of there now. I got this board. <laughs> you get down there and shoot. 
Eight apiece, great start to this game for both clubs. Oh, that had some mustard on it. Oh, baby! Moses and T-Rob on a rope! And he's got five points on the night. He's such a tough matchup for people because he's so long in the guard spot. Pilots had 11 triples in that victory over San Diego as the whistle will stop play away from the ball. So Sholand, ooh, picks up his second very early in this first half. And that could affect some things. But the Pilots off to a great start offensively, leading this thing 11-8 at the Child Center. Here at the Child Center, Portland leading Pepperdine 11-8. J-Mo back mid-January. Portland buried Pepperdine 82 to 63. They basically led wire to wire. It was momentous because it was Portland's first WCC road win since 2018. Complete game. Yeah, and, and right now I just think both both quads are really playing at a higher level than they were at that point in the season. And you know, trying to get better and, and move both programs forward. Zedek banging into T-Rob. That's a heck of a battle. Wide open is Mitchell Jr. He's a really good three-point shooter. 40% from beyond the arc. Well, and Coach Leggins keeping Sholin in the ball game. That's confounding a little bit to me, although Silvetta looking to check in. Maybe Christian can get, oh, there's the release for a second. I didn't know if T-Rob thought it was coming. Six now for Robertson. Yeah, I thought he was going to the corner with that. And Portland, right, or Pepperdine, excuse me, four out of the last five from the field. Pilots hot as well. Millette back rimming off Zedek. I think it went off him. We'll see. That's gonna, they're gonna say it went off a Portland pilot. So Sholand out. Savetta will check in for the Portland Pilots. And Christian will probably sit for a while with those two early fouls. That hurts. It really does. And, you know, you'd like to maybe trust to bring him back. Ooh, nice hands by Naduka. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They got numbers. Robertson slips it to Wood. Hesitates. Savetta, welcome to the game, big fella. And that's exactly what they need from him is just come in, be solid. You know, you get it on the block, go up, use your size, and rebound the basketball. All right, Pepperdine, no Maxwell Lewis with the wrist. Jody Smith, tweak knee. Daryl Polk Jr. injured. Lean roster, substantial talent, not playing because of injuries. And here they are hanging tough. Heck yeah. Bash him in on the floor for Pepperdine. Misses his first attempt. A red-hot pilot club looking to extend the lead. It's 15 to 11. 
They got a mismatch. Boy, they do. Wood inside. wants that ball. He sure does. Mitchell on him and lots of length given up. Just don't have the angle. Well, and they're full fronting him inside, which is what they have to do. Oh, are you kidding me? Chris, heartbreaker. Where's the home rim there? That was halfway down. Oh, nice block. Oh! Silvetta from behind picks up his first team's third. Looked like it was clean, but they're going to whistle that play dead, and Pepperdine will go to the line. Let's take a look, J-Mo. I thought he got him nice and clean. Sure did. That looked good. Yep, sure did. That's unfortunate. That got the crowd going. Instead, Mike Mitchell Jr., the freshman. And what a great crowd today. Man. Fantastic crowd. Last regular season home game for the Pilots coming into this contest, winning four straight. Nice job by Mitchell Jr. He's got five. Gives you eight a game. But it's Millette with the 13 points. It's Zedek with the 13 points that make this club go. Look at the inside look, and quickly, quickly, Silvetta's got four points right at his seasonal average. Well, Zoe's come in and given them a great little lift here off the bench. Eight I, for 11. Yeah. It's the quality of shot that they're getting again. They're just, you know, moving the basketball, sharing it. <laughs> Everybody's staying home defensively. That's great defense interior. Here comes the Pilots. Robertson looking for it. Trailer, Naduka, mid-range. Uh-huh. That was all Naduka defensively staying with that play, getting the outlet, and then nice trail. And that's where he's really good is in that mid-range jumper. What a start for the Pilots leading 19-13. They are absolutely white hot from the floor. They've been that way for the last five games. And ooh, Millette. Millette silences the crowd and ends the 2-30 drought. That's Big a bucket. tough shot, too. Somebody in his face coming right off the down screen. Great pull. Leads this club in triples taken and made. Millette beyond his years. Good hands inside. Here comes Pepperdine. Bad angle there by T-Rob. He's got to move that ball to the wing spot. Majuk Deng. Most of his field goals, doesn't play a lot, but when he gets in, most of his field goals are triples. You got to close out on this guy. Yeah, make him put it on the ground. Quick 8 nothing run for Pepperdine to get right back into this thing. Well, you know, you talked about, you know, not having a lot of bodies, but they're confident, man. They're playing well together. Uh, you know, like I said, that Gonzaga game the other day, I thought they played really well. Three on the shot clock, stepping back. Good board. Boy, I'll say, Basham has come in the freshman center and given Pepperdine some nice minutes. Look at Dang uh, skying. So Lorenzo Romar going deep into his bench, going with Yoon and Deng, who don't get a lot of playing time, and they've done quite well. But it's the Portland Pilots with the hot start. They were up by a bunch until Pepperdine made a run. We got ourselves a game.
Pilots taking on the Pepperdine Waves. Hot shooting from both clubs, especially the Pilots continuing the pattern. And you love to see this if you're a Pilot fan. Oh, they're getting great ball movement. They're getting quality shots and obviously shooting a very high percentage. Six of their last eight from the field. Wow. I mean, really a, a, a great first 10 minutes. I mean, both teams scoring the basketball. One turnover by each club. Wow, taking clean. Taking care of the basketball. I mean, Pepperdine right now has no fouls in the half. Wow. So here we go. In that San Diego game, Jen, all of Portland pilot starters played 36 minutes or more. We told you they scored 90 of the 92 points and season highs in all kinds of averages as Austin finally gets one home. He's been robbed a couple of times. Yeah, first points of the game and he rejected that big on ball by Zoe and just took it to the rim. He's got a really quick first step and a great finish. So pilots regain the lead. Millette, inside look. Great job by the pilot defense to quickly swarm Basham, who I thought was going to have an easy bucket. Yeah, I didn't see the travel, but must have shuffled his feet. I'll tell you, Millette has extremely quick footwork. Coming off, saw his teammate down low. I mean, great pass, but good vision and great footwork. Last five, Millette is averaging 21 points a game for Pepperdine. My goodness. And he's closing in as being the freshman leader for three-pointers made in Pepperdine history. He needs four to tie. Mitchell with that foul, his first, team's first. I mean, you knew when Colby Ross and Kessler Edwards graduated for Pepperdine, there, and, and even Cedric Altman, who was really good for them in the backcourt, you know, you knew that Lorenzo Romar would have some shoes to fill. A couple of guys left the team, veterans, midway through the season, so it's been a lot of youngsters getting time. It really has, and, and talking to him this week, I mean, obviously really disappointed that they left because it was major producers, so these young guys are getting a lot of minutes. They're developing in the future you know with the talent that we see on the floor with recruiting it's going to be really good for this Pepperdine squad rimming out Wood tips wow. it to himself yeah good board by Wood Swiss Army knife kind of guy for the Portland Pilots plays so many positions and plays them well Robertson extra pass Austin catch shoot that's short Wood lands awkwardly and here comes Pepperdine well, Austin's had three really good looks from the three-point line. Deng's not going to quit shooting. Ooh. That was unlucky. Wood with another carom. Deng is a very good three-point shooter. Most of his field goals coming from distance. He thought that was halfway down. So Deng whistled for that foul. His first. Yeah, he, he, he wanted the offensive foul there with the initiation with the shoulder by Austin. Didn't get that call. Second team foul. Showing back in. Interesting. 8.53 left to go. Remember, he's got the two fouls. Yeah, and if you're Pepperdine, you go right at him because he really has played well in the last few weeks and scoring the basketball. You just don't want him to pick up a, a cheap one before halftime. Ohia, Obioha, onto the floor for Pepperdine. Austin using the strength and one. Well, if it's not falling from the three-point line, that's a great adjustment of getting himself to the rim, and that's the second time he's gotten somebody, you know, off the dribble and just a good finish. Old-fashioned and one play. This will be Pepperdine or Portland's first free throw of the night. So Yoon picks up that foul. Austin representing that first free throw toss. 24-19. Contact inside. Portland, 
So Austin's first, team's fourth. Ohia Obioha at 6'9 represents some length for Pepperdine. Otherwise, it's a smaller group, and Millette doesn't care. And again, milestones all over the place, ready to be broken by this young guy. He's already got eight. And again, the last five averaging 21 points a game. Yeah, playing really, really well. Austin doubled, looking for some help. Finds it in T-Rob. That's off. Ball tipped away. And Yaru Harvey, who had checked in, picks it up as far as the foul. His first team's fifth. I didn't see it, but must have been a little bit physical on the board, just trying to, I mean, it got tipped. So Pepperdine will inbound it with the chance to tie or take the lead. He was tied a few moments ago at 19 apiece. Pilots lead by a deuce here. So Yoon steps out of bounds, turnover Pepperdine. So 24-22, the Pilots starting really hot. Pepperdine not going away. Houston Millette just willing this club to stay in this thing. 24-22, Pilots with the lead, just under eight minutes to play in the first half. Twenty-four, twenty-two. Pilots leading Pepperdine. Seven fifty-four left to go in this first half here at the Child Center. Pilots looking for their fifth straight victory and exceeding expectations. Remember, this was a club picked to finish last in the WCC. Nowhere near that when you look at the standings. Yeah, a chance to go five hundred in conference play, and uh, I, you know I mentioned it the other night. Nobody wants to play this Portland squad moving forward here towards the tournament. I mean, they're just playing really, really well together. And, uh, you know, when you talk to opponents, they just talk about all the weapons that they have, and they're just playing tremendous together. So Sholand in with the two fouls. Portland not able to get untracked from beyond the arc. Great hustle play inside by Millette. Triples keeping this Pepperdine bunch in it, J-Mo. Yeah, four of nine from the three-point line, and, and Portland just one of seven. But you're right. They've hit some key ones here in the last few minutes that have kept them in this ball game. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Mitchell and Millette. Step back. Tough shot. Rims out. Unlucky. Naduka will bring the charge. Yeah, that's a tough shot to defend, too. And... He's got a really bright future. Oh! He's just a blast to watch. You love the mismatch inside. If you're Wood, you want that ball. He's trying. Yep. You know, hey. full front by the guard, and that's exactly what you got to do. 
Extra pass, Naduka with one on the shot clock. Oh, Wood got, wow, clotheslined and nothing, nothing. I think everybody in the building thought a whistle went off. Wow. Naduka takes one for the team. Ohia Obioha, the charge. His first, team's third. Portland starting so hot, but JMO cooling off. One for their last seven. Yeah, just over two minute drought, like you said. And, you know, you, you gotta tip your hat to Naduka, man. He's just putting his body on the line, both ends of the floor. Undersized guy, but he'll take on anybody. The Pilots not able to give themselves a whole lot of separation with the cold shooting recently. Naduka throws it away. Munson. Oh. So the play will be whistled dead as Naduka picks up that foul. His first, team's sixth. And only the second turnover of the game, so you, you know, that hasn't been a factor really. Zedek back on the floor, the big 6'9 senior who was so hot to begin this game. Very, very dangerous anywhere on the floor, and Pepperdine throws it away. Coach Romar not happy about that one. Both teams just, you know, struggling to score right now. Yep, you're right. I mean, the beginning of this game, it was back and forth, back and forth, trading buckets, trading punches, and now, it's droughts for both clubs. Droughts and some turnovers. I don't know if fatigue is starting to play a little bit of a part in this or defense is picking up a little bit. Another foul away from the ball. This is getting really physical. And Yoon picks up his second, making his first career start ever. The 6'4 senior walk on. Let me take a look here. Robertson coming off, and you can see just, just bodying him up. Just can't do that. Deng back on the floor for Pepperdine, getting valuable minutes. Portland hasn't scored in just three minutes. Wow. Good defense by Pepperdine. Very active. And another whistle, a lot of a Millet this time. His first, sixth team foul. And this game slowing down with cold shooting and a lot of whistles. Well, you talked about the physicality of the game kind of jumping up a little bit, and that's where the officials are going to try to control it a little bit. Little hand, you know, hand touch or displacement. You're going to get called for it, hand checking. Sholin off the pick. Great Sweet curl stroke. Cut. Yeah, great curl cut, and he's just, he elevates so high with such a high release. That is hard to stop. On the board now, Munson, one dribble. That was a mistake. Here comes the Pilots with the swipe. Sholin steps back. Oh, baby, continuing his hot ways, even with the two fouls. Sholin. His last four averaging 17 and nine and red hot from beyond the arc. That was a mid-range stroke, J-Mo. Yeah, nice step back, created that space and just elevated. Pepperdine right now really struggling. Five turnovers in the last six minutes. This last five minutes, they've got to be a little bit more productive and take care of the basketball. This is a tough stick. Yep. You can't stop it. When you create that much space with that kind of elevation, you can't stop it. It was the USF game, the second time around with these two clubs. That was Kristen Sholin's coming out party. Yeah. 23 and 18, five triples, clutch bucket after bucket after bucket. He follows that LMU 15 and seven and five blocks and he hasn't missed a beat since. I think he had 13 points in that last five minutes and you're right, he has just taken that momentum and just transferred, you know, everything, every game he's played, he's elevated what he's doing. There's Sholin. On paper, he gives you 6.6 .6 points a game. But again, the last four averaging 17 points and nine boards. Man. Well, talking to the coaching staff, there's like just something clicked. And yeah. he's starting to figure it out. And man, 
He's been really good since he's figured it out. Student section up, yelling for some defense. Great energy here at the Child Center. Naduka on the high hedge. Zedek misses. That's a shot he normally makes. Ball tipped in the hands of Wood. Here comes Portland. Yeah, he's had a, he had a hot start. He's been quiet since. He had the first six points at their first six, seven points for their team. Austin can't get it down with the left hand. Four minute Pepperdine drought. Here's Millette. Ah, yet nice. again, yet again, you can write a dissertation if you're T-Rob on how to take a charge. Man, six turnovers now in just a matter of six, seven minutes for Pepperdine. And Millette picks up his second. Yeah, he's going to have to sit. And and Romar's smart here because he cannot afford to not have him on the ball on the floor in the second half. T-Rob, it just seems like every single game, J-Mo, he's picking up a charge or two. I don't know if there's been a game that he hasn't picked one up. He's just so smart defensively. Back rim and off, had the shot he wanted against Yoon. So under four to go in this first half. Mitchell, wow, NBA three. Again, he is a three-point ace. He's got eight points. Big stick right there. Right. He had somebody in his face. And did Pepperdine need that? Naduka. Well, we talked about it earlier. That three-point shot has kept them in the basketball game. They're five of ten. Austin, Austin, the tip not there. Sholin battling. Good defense by Pepperdine. Here come the waves. Got Mitchell, Yoon. Look at that defense. I mean, by committee. Austin. Yeah. Great defense by Portland. Ends up in a, a turnover going the other way. And a great job at just looking up the floor, getting it going. Seven now for Austin. Give the people what they want, and they wanted a jam, J Mo. Sholin doing a great job avoiding further foul trouble. Yes. Robertson. Catch, shoot. Boy, the rim has been tight tonight. Look at that hustle play by Sholin. Austin. Oh, that would have brought down, brought down the house, J-Mo. Naduka picking up that foul. His second. He's got to be careful. He does, but you, you got to, you know, tip your hats to these guys. I mean, they are boarding hard on both ends of the floor. He tried to get himself around, sneak that one on the opposite side, but uh, just great hustle. Okay, Chris, there you go. The lead is Portland's 30 to 25, under three to go in this first half. This has been a fun one. Come on back. Just a great crowd here at the Child Center. Last home game of the regular season for the Portland Pilots. There's a buzz about this club, Jennifer Mountain. The word on the street is these guys are here to play, here to stay. And, and this is a great representation of how the community feels about these guys. And, you know, just momentum going into next year and, and the future of this ball club. 
Yoon, the walk-on, making his first career start ever, the 6'4 senior out of California. Now four for five from the charity stripe this season. Played a career-high 12 minutes against Gonzaga, and Coach Romar liked what he saw and started the young man. Well, there's your example of just keep working, keep grinding, good things will happen. Yep. Silvetta back on to the floor for the Pilots. Wants to set that high pick. And he gave him good minutes. Silvetta, ball bounces out of his hands. I like the idea off the pick. He rolled right to the hoop. T-Rob found him, but turnover. Yeah, great execution except for the catch. Yep. And, and right now, if if I'm Shantae, I might pull Sholin out just so he does not get a chance of picking up that third. Yoon. Playing with a lot of confidence. Boy, I guess. Only his second bucket of the year. Four points now for Yoon. Oh. Well, I don't know about that shot. Ball tipped away. Here comes Mitchell. Way too deep. Chance for Pepperdine to take the lead. The thing about that shot is it was super deep and super fast. Too, too quick in the shot clock. Pilots cold. Austin steps into the three. Can he change things? Nope. Uh-oh, and Sholin just picked up his third. Wow. Man, that is brutal for Christian with just a buck 49 left, and he just couldn't help himself. And to your point, it was risk and no reward. Yeah, I mean, that's just momentum coming down, but, I mean, it's a foul. Sure. So more free throws for Pepperdine and a chance to take the lead. Yeah, right now, I mean, you know, Portland, you, you look at the, the looks that they've got from the three-point line, they're one of 11, but they've been good shots other than, you know, maybe the deep one there, but they've been decent shots at it, just not shooting it very well. You you change that stat right there, and this lead becomes a little bit, or the lead becomes a little bit different. Well, and Portland's been making those yeah. shots during this win streak yeah. as Dang hits the first free throw. He's now two for four on the season from the free throw line. Nice job by the redshirt sophomore. So free throws also keeping Pepperdine in the lead, or excuse me, in the game, and they've got the lead. Free throws and three-point line. Not for long as T-Rob picks up points number seven and eight to go along with those six assists. Yeah, he's had a great first half. In the top 10 in scoring rebounds and assists, only Eli Scott from LMU can say that. T-Rob doing it all. It's that and his leadership. No, no, that's not in the stack, cat stack category, but it is huge for this club. There's a walk. And I'll tell you what, that defensive effort right there started with Wood, who was able to contain Mitchell, and then the travel against Pepperdine. Yeah, and he traveled because Robertson stepped over, was walled up, and he didn't want to pick up a charge. Ninth that's turnover. Yep. Pepperdine does a pretty good job of not turning it over too excessively, but they've got nine already. Average about 15 cough-ups. Pilots by one. Buck five left to go in this first half. Wood wants it. Austin, and again, Tough read right there. Wood's got to put it up. Two on the shot clock. Whoa, Moses Wood with eight points now to go along with the five boards. That was off one foot. Wow, peg legged and all. What a hit by Wood. Big shot, big shot. Zedek down low. Oh, bailout foul. Wow. And the Pilots cannot believe it. As Silvetta picks up his second. Yeah. Ohia Obioha had lost the handle, and it looked like a turnover. Instead, Victor will go to the free throw line. Yeah, the, the officials might have missed that one there, but you're right. He just missed it. Kind of stumbled to go get it. And I don't know if they just were at a bad angle to see the body or what. Legs can't believe it. I don't think anybody in the building can believe it. Great free throw shooting by Pepperdine. Seven for seven 
Ohia Obioha, a good free throw shooter, leads this club in blocks and he'll give you five and five. He's just an active guy and a good free throw shooter. Gets them both. So the Pilots will take a timeout with the two-point lead, 25.4 left to go in this first half. Shot clock off. They can do what they want with this last possession. Absolutely. Wind it down. Just make sure that you go in with at least a two-point lead. Looking to extend it. Spread them out. Get a quality shot. Look to penetrate. Coming off an on-ball and just create for yourself. It's been a while since Portland has been this cold from beyond the arc. They've been shooting the ball so well during this win streak. Two for 12 from distance. Meanwhile, Pepperdine, five for 11 and all those free throws. We'll take a look at Moses. Look at that off one Man. Ooh. And boy, did the Pilots need that. Yeah. That was with two, maybe one on the shot clock. He had to jack it up. And it was a big shot, too timing wise so Sholand with the three fouls that really hurts the cause how much do you think he sits JMO I know every coach has different theories you put that coaching cap on what do you think in the in the second half I think I probably start him and, and see how it goes no way trust him a little bit now I would have probably pulled him out but you know everybody has their own philosophies that's for sure Sholand doing a great job starting Mike Meadows with that bad back hasn't been able to play for a while we're hoping he's serviceable maybe by the end of the regular season, certainly by the conference tournament. Right. The thing about that is a back, you just never know with the physicality of the game and, and then his conditioning level once he comes back. Robertson wheeling, dealing, just gives himself separation. Zedek goes flying on his rump. What a play. Robertson completely had Zedek fooled, and Jan bounces the ball in frustration. Big bucket by T-Rob to end this half, 37-33 Pilots. Great end of the half right there, and a nice little run, and you know, both teams playing pretty physical. I, I like what I see from both sides of the floor. It's going to be stops, and let's see if Portland can get hot from that three-point line. Another double-figure game for T-Rob. He's got the 10 points, and that was a big bucket to end the half. 37-33, Pilots at the break.
Welcome back to the Child Center, Portland. Pepperdine doing battle here on the bluff. Taking a quick break, and this is an awesome time to introduce a good friend to the Portland Pilots, Dr. John Watsky. John, Dean of the School of Education and the Graduate School, you've been here for 12 years. Right. Help folks understand uh, just the mission and the goals yeah. that you have right here and in the future for yeah. your uh, endeavors. Thanks. Well, the School of Education, really our mission is to prepare teachers and leaders to serve all families and students. I mean, that's, that's our core mission. We do that through undergraduate programs, master's programs that prepare teachers. Uh, they're spread out all over the county and outside the county, in fact. Uh, we partner with about 100 schools, wow. I believe it. And um, we prepare principals, of course. And then we have doctoral programming. These are doctoral candidates who are you know, working with districts, working with the student data, looking at effectiveness of programs, those sorts of things. So it's really you know, career span education. That's what we do. Okay, so from that angle, how does yeah. your program continue to reach out and integrate into the communities in the Portland metro right. area and beyond? Yeah, well, I think, I think the, the core piece there is that all of our programs have a, a connection with the community. There's always a field experience, clinical, or some kind of internship as well. So it's really not, not about taking classes on campus. It's about being out in the community and learning from the community you know, how to apply what you're learning in the classroom. Collectively, we put together about 100,000, 100, thousand hours of service no way. to schools and, and wow. nonprofits a year you know and that's that's I think a testament to our programs that are our students as well so. how have you your programs your staff dealt with the pandemic right. as it started two years ago it feels like yeah. 200 years yeah. ago, but you've been dealing with it ever since you know I just met with a, a group of student teachers a panel and it's really been amazing I, I tell them they're gonna graduate with more experience and more skills uh, than ever than ever before but uh, you know when class went online when those schools went online they went online with the teachers as well okay. and they were uh, student teachers virtually uh, the uh, the host teachers the cooperating teachers were so happy to have them to help to help manage that transition I mean everyone was learning as we went and uh, we're just so proud of them and so you know we went online with everyone else and they experienced their own classes online at the same time not easy challenging but they persevered and, and they're gonna be great teachers the integration with athletics it's, yeah. it's getting more and more interesting the transfer portal yes. uh, graduate transfers nil all that stuff that becomes a part of your world right. help us understand how you're dealing with that embracing yes. that i mean in graduate education you know one thing that we've seen is we have more graduate students more athletes uh, more international students as well so that has been great for our campus um, and also it's challenged us to think about this this the one year the summer one year one and a half year term how can we tailor programming so it really re reaches the needs of athletes and in turn that reaches the needs of more of our students in general as well so so it's been a great I think transition for us it challenged us, challenged us to do better as well Dr. Watsky you've been here 12 years and my hope is that you're here for another 12 years and then some uh, from my heart and for everybody here I'm gonna speak for them thank you for all you do and and please continue to keep doing what you're doing because it sure is impacting an awful lot of people. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That'll do it. Dr. Right. John Watsky, you come back anytime. We're going to bring you back, young man. All right. That concludes this chunk of halftime. Coming back with highlights and stats in a minute.
halftime continues from the bluff. We're at the Child Center, home of the Portland Pilots. Pilots leading a gritty, young Pepperdine bunch, 37-33. Again, we're at halftime. Second half just around the corner. Ann and Jennifer, delighted to have you with us. It was an early Portland Pilot lead, but then Pepperdine claws back with some triples and free throws. Yeah, right now, the three-point line, they're 5 of 11 and 8 of 8 from the free throw line that kept them in the ball game and getting quality shots. And, you know, really, you, you look at the stats through the half, and it's just poor shooting from Portland from the three-point line, and they've only had one attempt at the free throw line. And for a team that leads the conference, fourth in the country from the free throw line, you've got to do something different and get yourself an opportunity. We'll check those numbers in a second, but let's take a look at the impact player of the game, Tyler Robertson, already in double figures with 10 points and six helpers. Yeah, the six assists is probably even more important for Portland right now, but just he scores in so many different ways in transition, nice little jump hook coming in. Look at that pass. I mean, that was right in the beginning of the half and just a rifle in there and nice job of getting inside position. And that's the thing, he's so deadly inside and out. It's really hard to guard and just weaving himself in and out. Keeps the ball in his hands and just makes good decisions. That's the bucket to end the half where he got Zedek all tied up. Yep. Scoring to go into double figures. So that's where we stand 37-33. Pilots at the break. All right, so some numbers, J-Mo, coming at you. Yeah, you look at field goal percentage, both teams shooting, you know, pretty relatively good. It's that three-point line, two of 12, just 17% for Portland assist-wise. And, and really, Portland's done a great job of taking the ball, taking care of the ball. Nine turnovers for Pepperdine. Really more late in that first half is when they started to turn it over a little bit. But uh, if you're Portland, you've gotten quality shots from a three-point line, you got to knock some down in this second half. All right, so Portland cold from beyond the arc, but making hay inside the paint. Look at that. 26 to 6 points in the paint. You know, just doing a great job. And and credit them. They're not hitting from the outside, do something different, right? And they're going inside with it. And then points off turnovers. They got nine points off of the nine turnovers for from Pepperdine and doing a nice job. Just got to hit some shots, like I said, in that second half. So this game is up for grabs, no doubt about it. Second half just around the corner. The Pilots trying to hold off Pepperdine to keep the win streak going. They're looking for their fifth straight win. We'll see if it happens. Come on back for the second half.
here at the Child Center. Shantae Leggins talking to the troops, Jennifer Mountain, as he knows this game is definitely on the line. With the four-point lead, the Pilots have got to like having the advantage that Pepperdine hanging tough. Yeah, they got to come out with great defensive pressure and then offensively go back to what was working in the, in the beginning of getting some ball swings, patient on offense, getting quality looks, and, you know, hopefully bringing back that fire from a three-point line and knocking some of these perimeter jumpers down. How much will it affect the Portland Pilots not to have Christian Scholin in the lineup? He's got the three fouls. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. This first four or five minutes is going to be crucial. Wow. It looks like he's going to start the I'm second shocked. half. I'm shocked. All right. Uh, Shantae Leggins rolling the dice. Kristen Scholand, who has been so hot lately. Remember, his last four averaging 17 points and nine rebounds. Scalding from beyond the arc. But he, he's playing with three fouls, but will start the second half. He's got to be disciplined in this first five minutes of just not picking up a quick one. Sholin leads this club with blocks, and sometimes he just can't help himself when the opportunity arises. Robertson backing down his defender. Almost the same look that they got in that first half. Look at Wood. And knocks it off of Zedek. Good heads-up play instead of turning it over. You know, get another opportunity offensively for the Pilots. And Zedek quickly will run over and talk to Romar. He'll take a seat as well. So Basham in. It was Zedek that started so hot for this Pepperdine club. Wood throws it away. And that's not the start you want offensively is if you're pi the Pilots. Easy call for the refs to make there as Munson is over the back. His first, team's first. It was a good look for Millette. Just good inside position and, you know, with Sholin's athleticism, there's not too many opportunities where you're going to take that one from him. Pilots doing a great job taking care of the basketball. Turnover just moments ago. Let's see what they can do with this possession. Swarming Pepperdine defense. Yeah, Pepperdine's doing a nice job of closing the lanes. Austin. Wood skying for that rebound. Inside look, Naduka blocked. Basham thought he had all ball. Instead, he will be nicked for that foul. His first team second. Let's see. Maybe with the body? Maybe mm. a little bit with the body, but up top it looked pretty good. Freshman out of Phoenix, really aggressive. Naduka will go to the line. So Austin continues to look for his shot from beyond the arc, but 0 for 6 from distance. The team 2 for 14. Well, I like what he did in the first half where he wasn't hitting, little pump fake, and then getting to the rim or that mid-range jumper. He has that in his repertory. He's got to do something different. He's kind of taking a little bit too long on that shot. He needs to just step in and pull it. No thought. Naduka with a handful of points to go along with six rebounds. Ball knocked away. Austin doesn't have numbers. Now he does. There's Wood. Wood takes contact. Nothing there. Ooh. There's the travel. Yep. And Robertson playing the help defense to cut Millet off at the pass and force the travel. Really, both possessions, great transition defense by both squads. You know, turnover, Pepperdine gets back, makes a play, and then going back the other way, Robertson does a nice job of stepping in and pulling that travel there. Both teams struggling to score as both teams ratcheting up the defense. Austin taking contact, can't get it down. High percentage look isn't there. Yoon had a notion. Lots of time in the shot clock. Millette, strong move to the cup, takes contact and scores. He's got 10. Yeah, I think he got away with the travel there with Austin coming from behind, but just a great athletic move. And again, his first step is amazing. Austin will go to the line. Boy, Austin has been really looking for his shot. So Mitchell Jr. picks up his second. Team's third.
And I, and I like that Austin went to the rim there. He has an extremely strong athletic body that can get to the rim and finish, get himself to the free throw line. And that's a scorer's mentality. If you're not shooting it well from the perimeter, get yourself to the free throw yep. line. Again, you mentioned it, Portland, the number one free throw shooting team in the conference, one of the best in the country. They want to get to the line. The lead is five early in the second half. Great swarming defense, and it results in a turnover. Three guys just blanketing Basham. Great help defense, great team defense, and then, you know, trying to make a quick decision. Ball goes the other way with a, a, the 12th turnover from P Pepperdine. Again, a club that doesn't turn it over a lot. They only turn it over 15 a game. They've already got 12 cough-ups. Wood behind the back. Little jump hook is true over Yoon. 10 points now for Wood. Another double-figure game for him. That's number 20 on the season. You know, that's the thing that this Portland squad, it's like you take one thing away, they go to something else. And they've got so many weapons. Basham loves the mismatch against Naduka. Unlucky there, did everything yeah. but go down. Basket didn't want it. That was a nice look. Naduka, undersized but plays so tough. Robertson, inside look, Naduka can't get it down. Oh. Right now their philosophy is just back Pepperdine down. Again, swarming interior defense by the Pilots. Nothing coming easy for anybody wearing orange. Now, as soon as they catch the basketball, there is a double team or somebody walling up inside. Great team defense. And Sholin's done a nice job of keeping himself out of trouble and playing really disciplined this first four minutes. Ohia Obioha back onto the floor for Pepperdine. And boy, you're right. You're reading my mind, J-Mo, about the discipline of, of Schoen. They need him and his scoring. He's got to stay on the floor. Mitchell Jr. spinning. Robertson wouldn't let him get past. You know, Pepperdine's got some guards that really can create. There's the double. Nice look. Well, I'm going to just keep tipping my cap to Jay Yoon. Well, That's great his first read. triple. Great read because there's a double team. Somebody's got to be open and just found him in the sweet spot. And nice job of just knocking that three-pointer down. Yoon the walk-on starting for the first time coming into this game, scoring a total of five points. Wood with another triple. Yoon's got seven. Wood's got 13. And he's shaking his head like, finally, here we go. Yeah. Three of 16 now from the three-point line. Hopefully that'll get him going. A rare triple for the Pilots tonight. Zedek back on the floor. Remember, he scored the club's first six points of this game. And then he's been really quiet. Yeah, he got one there. He took advantage of Austin on the single coverage, and the big man scores eight now. I think they need to give him some more touches. Leads this club in 13 a pop. Heck yeah. Well, he's been very efficient, and every time he's really, you know, taken it at Portland, he's had success. Last two, he's been on fire. 20 against BYU, 16 against Gonzaga. Sholin short, but Naduka and now Wood. You bet. And Moses is feeling it. Yep. And that's all Naduka with the offensive rebound. 16 points now for Wood. My goodness, three over a seasonal average. You're right, that all started with the Duca on the boards. Yoon. And Wood doing it on both ends of the floor. Stepping into a three, can he do it again? Sholin almost tipping it true. This place would have come unglued. Yeah. Millet, NBA three. Naduka. Duke has got seven, seven boards right now on the game. Had a good look for Austin. Uh, look at that, double team again. Boy, that's just great inside defense by the Pilots.
so despite shooting four for 20 from beyond the arc, the Pilots still lead Pepperdine 48 to 40, 1351 left to go in this second half. Moses Wood likes that corner. How do you like this corner, Mo? I like it too. Pilots up by eight. Forty-eight, forty. Pilots leading Pepperdine, thirteen fifty-one left to go in this game. You look at the stat line for Moses Wood, and you like it. Oh, he's had a great start to this second half, just pulling the trigger, and that's exactly what Portland needed: is some production from the three-point line. Moses had eight at half. He's doubled that up to sixteen. And right now, Pepperdine's coming out in a little bit of a zone, little two-three zone. Coach Romar doesn't like to play a whole lot of zone, but he's got to mix it up a little bit with a, a short squad here with bodies. Seven on the shot clock. Austin slips it. Beautiful pass. And T-Rob scores. Great look from Chris. 12 and six now and make that on the assist department, but nearing another double-double T-Rob. Well, great job. Again, if, if you're not shooting the ball from the perimeter very well, doing something else, setting your teammates up, getting to the line, and that's... That's exactly what Portland's going to need from Austin. I, I'd like to see if your Pepperdine get Zedek some touches. Floater, tough look. You know, that first bucket that he had previous time down was the first field goal since 1646. So Sholin picks up his fourth. You figured it was probably a matter of time. So with 13.04 left to go in the game, Christian Scholen, one of the more valuable offensive and defensive players with that shot blocking ability, will sit for a while. Yeah, that's unfortunate right there. And, you know, for the first seven minutes, I thought he played really disciplined. But, you know, he's going to have to sit. I, I would say bringing him back maybe with eight minutes left on the clock. Well, let's Six see. Six minutes left on the yeah, clock. Yeah, not much earlier than that. It's a 10 point pilot lead. We'll see if Pepperdine can make a dent with Sholin on the bench. Come on back.
T-Rob. Leading the way for the Portland Pilots who lead Pepperdine 50 to 40. Again, Robertson top 10 in the WCC, scoring, rebounds, and assists. What a season the transfer from Eastern Washington is having. Great step through, yep. wonderful play by Millette. And that ends a two minute and 15 second drought. That's his 12th point of the game and they're in that zone again. He scores 13 points a game, but again, the last five averaging 21. How about that answer? How about that answer? Great answer by Robertson. And you know, that's one thing. You, know, you go to a zone with a team that really hasn't shot the ball that well from a three-point line, and it bites you in the you know right what? off the bat. Yep. <laughs> Zedek with a great look and gets the follow. So Zedek now with 10. First few minutes of the game, the athlete, the big guy, had six, yeah. has been quiet, but now into double figures. Nice crossover. Good ball movement. Austin cannot get that three-pointer down tonight. 0 for 8 from beyond the arc, and some really good looks for Chris. Yep. Good defense by Zoe inside. Whoa! Mitchell, another triple, 11 points now, and I think he's got three triples yep. tonight. Three of five right wow. now. Wow. I mean, they're shooting 47% from the three-point line, and it's really kept them in the ball game. They usually shoot about 34% from beyond the arc, but tonight a different story. T-Rob just kind of following his teammate, Naduka, and Pepperdine. A chance to grow ever closer. Zedek, NBA three, and gets it home. Oh boy. 13 points, and there you see his versatility. I mean, inside and out. I mean, that's a big shot in transition for a big guy. So Sholin on the bench with four fouls. Pepperdine coming back with a nice little eight nothing run. Match themselves back up here. Robertson, Naduka, second thoughts. Robertson, nope. Unlucky bounce there off that. Had to kind of hurry that shot late into the shot clock. Yep. As Vucinic will check into the Portland Pilot lineup when we come back. Pepperdine, you got to give the Waves credit. Robertson's triple had Portland feeling good, but now the Waves only down by three with a lot of time left in this one. Pilots trying to hold on to the lead against Pepperdine, 53 to 50. Want to take a moment. Broadcast team of myself and Jennifer Mountain, Brian Slyke. Hands on hearts as Doug Edwards, a, a, a great ambassador for this Portland Pilot community, lost his wife, Gwen, to cancer. And we want to give our hearts and prayers 
to Doug. He's one of our favorite people in the whole world. Every time we have a game, he comes and says hello to us at the broadcast table. He lives large, and this community will take good care of Doug Edwards. We love the man. And we're tied up. Dang with a career high. Having a great, great Ooh, nice game. Pass. And inside look, Bucinich, and that helps. Good answer and great pass by T-Rob. Seven assists now for T-Rob to go along with the double figure scoring effort. Back and forth we go, under 10 to go. Zedek has been unstoppable. Yes. Just a low to guard. Almost drags that foot, but instead coaxes home the deep, deep little hook. He's got 15. I'll tell you, he's been, in the last five minutes, the difference maker in yep. this ball game. And I mean, I had kind of been talking about it, why they hadn't get, you know, given him an opportunity and get him some touches, but uh, great job in this last five minutes. 13 to two Pepperdine run, JMO. Yep. 13 to two. Well, we knew this game was gonna be a close one. And it's a game of runs. They've got to respond here. Portland needs to respond offensively and then have to get some quality defensive stops. T-Rob just backs, backs, backs into a home zone where he's got 17 points now. Well, when you need a bucket and you need a big play, he's the guy that comes through for you. So great job by Portland. Got to get a defensive stop if you're the Pilots. Sholin continues to sit with four fouls and Vucinic will pick up that foul. His first, team second. Pepperdine not going away, five for their last five. They've had a couple of scoring droughts in this game, but they always seem to right the ship, and Zedek has been a huge part of that. Oh, this last five minutes, he's been tremendous. I mean, not Catch only- and shoot. Yep. Millet now with the 14. I mean, Zedek hit that three in transition. That score, you know, jump hooks, nice little step through, nice double team right there. Ooh. Late whistle, charge is gonna go against Robertson. Late whistle, so T-Rob picks up that foul. We'll take a look at it here and lower his shoulder a little bit, but just a late, late whistle on that. And look who has the lead. Millette, the flop, the whistle blows. Millette scores again. Pepperdine continues its run and has the two-point lead. And a flop warning on that call. Yep. Next one leads to a technical foul. Millette has been so hot the last five games. Wood. Oh boy, almost picked up an and one on the three-point opportunity. Dang got him, his second, and Wood will go to the line. Yeah, Coach Romer not happy with that foul right there. That's, that's a young squad right there. Yeah. Look at all these young pups on the floor for Pepperdine. Zedek, the junior, kind of the elder statesman of this club as Wood gets home the first one, an 83% free throw shooter. Portland still trailing by one. Boy, this has been a, a back and forth ebb and flow game, yep. Jennifer Mountain. He's gonna have one more, Will Wood. He's getting close to another 20 point game and getting close to his career high of 22. Big three points for Wood. He's got 19. Wood and Robertson carrying this team offensively. Pilots by a singleton. 8.25 left to go. Millette is feeling it. Got to put together a couple stops here if you're Portland. Good help. Eight on the shot clock. Millette puts it on the deck all the way to the cup. Offensive rebound, and an air ball. I don't know if that shot actually hit the rim. 
They reset it anyway. Regardless, it's going back to Portland. All right, Jennifer Mountain predicted that Sholin would come in with eight minutes to go. It's 7.59. I'm going to give you this one. We're going to round it out. <laughs> and you're spot on. That a boy legs. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. A Pepperdine run has gotten the waves way back into this thing. Down the stretch we come. Come on back. 7.59 left. Sixty to fifty-nine, the pilots leading Pepperdine. There's a lot of time left in this one, J Mo, and with seven fifty-nine to go, Kristen Scholen with four fouls checks back in. I think it's a smart move, and and the reason I think it's a smart move is they changed offensively and defensively drastically when he's in the basketball game. So he's got to be extremely disciplined. But this next four or five minutes, if Portal wants to win this ball game, there's got to be a change on both ends, and and I like the move. Pepperdine, Pepperdine, no more looks like. Oh boy, in out and in. Schoen comes off the bench and quickly hits the triple. Oh baby. Back to the point though that Pepperdine no more looks like the last place team in this league. No. Then I'm going to the moon. Well, that's that's the beauty of this West Coast Conference is there's so much talent. And a great answer right there by Zydek. So Zydek begins his career at Pepperdine, basically a perimeter guy. Now he can cross up the defense going down, going outside. And that time the triple was true. Sholand again. Well, you don't want to fall in love with it. Got to take quality shots. But Zydek has just been tremendous. He's feeling it. He knows it. Jump hook. That's what I'm saying. Inside, outside. Z deck with 20 points now. His career high is 28, and he wants the ball every time down. Pepperdine with the lead. Well, and smart because he had Sholand on him. You know, go right at him. Sholand again with the triple. Hit that first one off the bench, missed two straight. Yoon, extra pass Good and the turnover. By Wood. Oh. Teams exchanging turnovers. Oh boy. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Good hands by Wood. Just couldn't get it back in their grips. Game one, mid January, UP rolls on the road 82 63 against this Waves team. Not tonight. Millette, you know it. He, he can create for himself in so many ways. He and Zedek have been one heck of a one-two punch. Three-point Pepperdine lead. If I'm not mistaken, it's their biggest lead of the game. Robertson, ball hawking, Wood. Oh, Moses, did the Pilots need that? 22 points, ties a career high. 
Well, I'll tell you right now, like if you're Portland, he's the one that you want shooting the ball from the three-point line. And that ends a 7-0 run for Pepperdine and a, a timely one too. Millette cannot be stopped. The freshman going off 20 points now. Last five, he's been averaging 21. What he did against Gonzaga and BYU with the big boys. They're gonna call another charge against Robertson as Yoon really stands in there. And the walk-on making his first career start ever draws the second charge against Robertson tonight. I don't know, it was the same bump from the previous dribble, so I'm not sure. Pepperdine's gonna call a quick timeout here. Second foul on T-Rob, fourth team foul. And Pepperdine, who looked like they were dead in the water, down by some 10 points in this second half, going on a couple of impressive runs, leading by two with under five to go. Well, I mean, you look at the performance by Millette, I mean, he's creating, he's hitting threes. And I mean, just Zedek has done a great job. Every time he touches the ball, I mean, I start talking about it and all of a sudden they go to him and he's just absolutely killed Portland from inside and out. So Millette averaging 21 points a game over the last five. 12 for 28 from beyond the arc coming into this contest. Dynamic at the free throw line as well and the freshman Again, one of the best in this conference, J-Mo. He's just so quick with the ball, tight handles. He can create, elevate. And you know, you look at him, I actually expected to be him to be a little bit bigger in person, but man, he can get off the ground. He can shoot it both ways. Gosh, in game one, Millette only had the eight points and fouled out. Yeah, this is a different basketball club from the first time around, and, and for both teams, really. His career high is 31. He just dropped that against BYU. Then follows up with 25 against Gonzaga. I mean, those are the big boys of the conference, two of the better teams, and the freshmen live in large. Well, there's no fear in those veins, that's for sure. And, you know, talking to Coach Romar, I mean, he thinks this guy is really going to be special by the time he graduates. Special already, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Okay, Pepperdine with the lead, with the ball. And you know it's going to be Millette or Zedek. Well, the thing the about looks. it is don't let him get the basketball. Square up, Zedek. Wow, what a game for Zedek. 22 points now for Jan. His career high is 28. Biggest lead of the game for Pepperdine. You know, that's just a great reverse pivot. Square up and score. Wood barely grazes the rim. And this crowd, and it's a good one, last regular season home game for the Pilots has gone quiet. Well, if you're Portland, I just think you need to get some ball swings before you shoot that three. You know, as a team, they've struggled. And there's a turnover right there. Don't need a three shot, three point shot every single time down. They need a quality shot. There it is, high percentage look for the Pilots would really help as they trail by four. Wood. That's what I'm talking about. Backs his defender down, high percentage. He's got 24, career high. Smart. That was a smart move. I'd still like to see some ball swings, make the defense shift instead of one-on-one. -on -one. 335 left to go in the game. Millette. I like Moses Wood on Millette because he's got some length on him. Four on the shot clock. Floater. And Mitchell Naduka. picks up his third. Naduka standing tall and taking the charge. Big play. Let's see if Portland can capitalize. Wow, now they're reversing the call? Wow. Legs is out on the floor. Cannot believe it. And they're gonna call that foul on Naduka, his third. Wow, the initial call we thought was the charge favoring the Portland Pilots. Instead, Naduka will pick up the foul, his third, team's fifth. 
Yeah, that, this is a big call because less than three and a half to go in the game. It's a two-point basketball game. They did call a charge right off the bat, and for some reason, they've reversed the call. I don't know if it was a restricted circle situation. Well, if we've got the replay, perhaps we can take a look. But that call got Leggins out on the floor disputing the reversal. Big, big, big. Oh, he's well outside. Oh, man. How do you reverse that call? I have no idea. Good job of help defense. He is completely out of the circle. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The refs are hearing it because the big screen just showed the replay. And Legs had to go sit himself down because he was going to get teed up. And that is a huge call with 322 left to go in this ball game. Yeah. Now, if you're Portland, you got to use this as momentum. Like, use this fire right here. You got to get a defensive stop. It's a one possession game. It stops and quality possessions offensively and keep the ball out of Millette's hands. Ton of time left to go in this thing, but that's a big call. Yep. Initially, the officials called a charge against Mitchell Jr. and then reverse it and give the foul to Naduka, his third, team's fifth. Now the question is, did they call it on the ground or did they call it on the shot? That's a great question. Let's see what happens. It looks like we're gonna be throw, uh, shooting free, free throws. throws. Yep. This Boy. Is, I mean, you go from getting the ball with a one possession game offensively to now free throws, possibly down four points. So the Waves, perfect from the free throw line, will look to add to their lead. So this could be one heck of a swing. First miss of the game for Mitchell and for the Waves. So it's box out time. Second one is true. 71, 68, 321 left to go. One possession game here. Again, the Pilots looking for a quality shot. Robertson, what a block inside on T-Rob. Here come the waves, wow! Robertson denied at the cup. Big possession here for both teams. Yes, gotta have a stop if you're Portland and again, Quality possession. This is a guy you want to have the basketball. Mismatch, huge mismatch. Ooh. And Zedek cannot score over Austin. Sholin. Oh! oh! Home rim spits it out. Ooh. What would have been the tying three-pointer ends up in the hands of Pepperdine. Wow! How did that thing kick back out? I don't know. I thought that was down. Everybody did. Zedek, 2.20 left to go. Millette, good defense, step back, it's short. And the ball belongs to the Pilots. Each team with two timeouts left. Each team with five team fouls. 2.10 left to go. Don't need a three, you just need a great possession. Pilots going for their fifth straight win. Closing out the home season in the regular season campaign. Robertson inside, Naduka. Austin's been cold from beyond the arc, continues to miss. He is 0 for 9, Millett. They gotta call a travel on that. Nope, an offensive Sorry. foul. But can Portland take advantage? as Millette picks up his third, team's sixth. Yeah, they've done exactly what they needed to do defensively, but they haven't scored in just over two minutes. They've got to have a possession where, you know, there's 142 left in the ball game. Got to have a quality possession, high percentage shot, and they've got to make it. Pilots nine and four at home, so tough here 
at the child center, but Pepperdine is giving them all it can handle. Naduka cut off. Naduka gets it home. Good Seven job eight. of clearing that side out, and he just went right at him. Crowd is into it. Another huge possession for both clubs. Mitchell Jr. rises. Mitchell Jr. Oh! And he looks at the crowd and says, I just got a three ball home. That was a huge shot. You look at the basket that spit out Sholin's three, and then the three that's true for Mitchell that got the kind roll. So Yoon with that foul and Robertson will go to the line. 17 fouls now on Pepperdine. Well, if you're Portland, this is a great thing, great thing because you're scoring with the clock stopped. It's going to be a one possession game after this make here. It's got to be defense time for the pilots. We'll see if T Rob. as he is patiently waiting to see if he can get his club even closer. 33 straight free throws now for T-Rob. Those were huge. 74-72. T-Rob with 19 points under a minute to go. This is the stop that's got to be there for the Pilots if they've got a chance. A stop and a board. Got to have the defensive board. Millette, Naduka coming over to play help. Here's Mitchell Jr. with 10 on the shot clock. 40 to go in the game. Crossover. What a block! Yoon will wave that off. Yoon thought the ball was still in play, but the block results in Portland. Chris Austin. The ball as it, there it is, off of Mitchell. Okay, 74-72. Look out, look out. Again, you don't need a three, you need a quality. And Coach Lagan Smart gonna call a timeout here. So with 33.4 left to go in the game, there's a five second differential, J-Mo, between game and shot clock. I don't think you go really quick here but you want to go semi-quick so that if you don't score, you have the opportunity to foul and get the ball back and rely on your defense to get a stop. Pepperdine with the 11 triples. That ties a season high for the Waves. And that and the play of Millette and Zedek in the second half. Wow. Yeah, those two have been absolutely unstoppable in this second half. And... Tip your hat to both squads. It's been a battle. Zedek with 22 points. He only had six at halftime. Millette coming in with 18 points. Those two have been quite the combination. Boy, I'd love to be in that huddle right now. Yep. See what Leggins, you know, you know who your scores are out on the floor. Right now, it's, I would imagine, Robertson, Sholin. And Wood. And Wood. Yeah, and really, Moses Wood and, and Robertson have been the most effective for you. And those others, those others are huge threats. So, I mean, Sholin and Austin right now are combined one of 16 from the three-point line. Not that they don't have the ability to score, but just haven't knocked it down today. You've got to use them as weapons and threats, but you've got to go to the guys that have scored the basketball. Crowd is up, and it's a good one. Last home game in the regular season. Coming down to this, here we go. T-Rob wants to go to the rim, and one! T-Rob with 27 seconds left, gets it down, and he's fouled! T-Rob's got the big mean on, he's got the big mean on. <laughs> what a take! He is the guy that every single day makes the big play. So a chance now to complete the three-point play and give Portland the lead. With 27.3 left, 
crowd refuses to sit. Pepperdine calls the timeout. Wow. What a gutsy take by T-Rob. He had the angle and the edge, J-Mo, and he took sure it to did. the top, baby. Great job of drawing the contact and a, and a great finish. 21 points now for T-Rob and nine assists. Man. Another 20-point game for T-Rob. He's got four of them this season. The, the thing that's so great about him is he doesn't care about that stat line you just read. He cares about this scoreboard right here. He's got a chance to put his team up one with one possession to go. And obviously, Lorenzo Romar, knowing that he's got another timeout. Take another look at that. Oh, tough. Just a tough shot. He's getting hammered. And he's almost under the basket yeah, on the, the release. Angle, the angle of it oh. was really sharp. Brutal. Whatever coffee drink you've got going before the games, T. Robbie, you just keep drinking that thing. Then taste something. Yep. So here we go. 22 points for T. Rob. Game on the line. One point lead. The Pilots. It's going to be Millette or Zedek. You know it. Yep. You got to switch everything, and they're doing a good job at it so far. Mitchell. Zedek. Must have put the ball in the deck against the smaller Austin. Off the glass, wild shot. Ball oh. blocked. I think Sholin might have gotten the block. I think you're right. What a defensive effort by the Portland Pilots. And we'll take a look at it here. Here's the board. Goes up. And it was either Wood or yep. Sholin. They tag team that one, J-Mo. Jolin playing with four fouls, and he'll go to the line. Now, this is a one and one. This is, there's still 5.1 oh, yep. to go. There's a ton of time. And if Christian were to make these free throws, and he's a 73% uh, free throw shooter, still a ton of time for Pepperdine to get a quality three-pointer off to tie it. Yeah, it becomes still a one possession game, and these, these are critical. Because number one, you've got to knock them down so that you don't give up an opportunity for the lead to go away. And you'd have to make them make a tough three-point shot with that five seconds to go. They've got to knock down these free throws if you're Portland. So Sholin will shoot his first free throws of the night. The three-point play by Robertson giving Portland the one-point lead. T-Rob has made 34 straight free throws, none bigger than the one that gives Portland the edge with 5.1 left. And what a huge defensive possession for the Pilots. Team defense right there. Pepperdine knows they've still got action. Ton of time left. We'll see if Christian can hit his first free throws of the game. It's a one and one. Well, and you got to find Mitchell. First one. He's had a tremendous night from the three-point line. Yep. Four of six. Yes. Do not give him a look. And he wants it. There's three really capable scores on the floor right now. But Sholin's got work to do with the charity stripe. Gets them both. No fouls, and you have to make him make a tough shot. That's smart. They called a foul. And that's OK, because Portland had a foul to give. Yep. So that's the sixth team foul on the Pilots. 3.4 left. That's a good foul. Now let's see on the release. Don't foul him. The heave. And that'll do it. The Pilots come back to defeat Pepperdine 77-74. with that finish big defensive stop and what a great team effort it finished 500 in conference for this squad what a bundle of emotion from the pilots and this great crowd
Yeah, and it just gives them momentum going into next season. And we got, you know, one more weekend and, and tournament time, but the way this team is playing and the way this community is responding, there's a lot of great things happening on the bluff. This Portland Pilot Club learning how to win in different ways. <laughs> and a great crowd is being saluted by the pilots. They've kind of made it their tradition, Jennifer, to come over and salute, especially the student section, yeah, because this is a different joint with the students here. Oh, they're, the students make it so much fun. And, you know, tip your hat to the camaraderie of the student athletes, the people on campus getting people involved. And, and that's a lot of class right there, going over and showing that they appreciate them coming out and watching. 24 points for Moses Wood, 22 for Tyler Robertson, whose three-point play seals the deal in the final seconds for the Portland Pilots. That was a big-time shot, and I mean, just, you know, that that's one play. There was a lot of great things throughout the ball game, but when it really matters, man, he made some big plays. Moses Wood hit some big threes in the second half. And just collectively, what a great team win. That last defensive effort by the Portland Pilots. Wood, Sholin, give either one of them the block, but that was terrific because then Sholin hits those free throws, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, great defense. Of, you know, they were switching everything. They made him take a tough shot. And then that block off the offensive board with just a few seconds, just a great, great. I think Wood and Sholin got him, to be honest with you. And they end up shooting 92% from the free throw wow. line, 12 of 13. And, and we talk about how well they shoot as a club. You know, fourth in the in the country from the three or from the free throw line. Excuse me. I'm telling you, no one wants to see Portland in the tournament. Nope. I don't want to see Pepperdine either. This is no. one heck of a group. They are hurt. They've got a lean squad, but Zedek gives them 22. Millet 18. Mike Mitchell Jr. 17. They were a handful. Yeah, I, I was really impressed with the squad and you know all the injuries and this and that. They're young. They've got great future, and he's got them playing pretty hard right now. Moses Wood with a career Mr. high, 24 Mr. points, Mr. young man. What you Walk what us through you? the comeback and what you guys uh, are, yeah. We just, we knew we could win, we knew we could win, and we stuck together, and we got the dub, man. We just like, kept, keep fighting, keep fighting, that's what we kept saying, and we got the dub. That run down the stretch, that run down stretch was huge and uh, T Rob with the with the big three point play and of course the the, the charity tosses uh, by Sholin, but you hit some huge threes. Were you feeling it tonight? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a, a good shooting night for me, and uh, I got to give credit, credit to my teammates because they were finding me too, so. What do you think about this community and this crowd showing up for you guys the last couple of the games? I mean, it's got to feel good. You got students out here yeah. and just the momentum going into the last week. Oh, man, the crowd was so big time tonight. Uh, I'm so appreciative, appreciative of all the fans that came out. Uh, the energy in the building was just crazy, and I'm so proud of this team. What a way for you guys to wrap things up at home. I mean, was that kind of one of the things you talked about in the locker room? Let's do it for these fans. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. It's been long overdue for Portland basketball to be good. And, uh, you know, we're on the come up. We're on the rise. 24 points, young man, a career high. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Heck yeah. What a great victory for the Portland Pilots, defeating a really tough Pepperdine bunch, 77-74. Another massive win for the Pilots as they complete the series sweep against the Waves. They win their fifth straight and, and, and move to 500 in WCC play. Great, great rush by this gritty bunch. For Jennifer Mountain and our entire crew, I'm Ann Schott saying so long from the bluff. Stay healthy, stay safe, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Pilots win. Stretch run, baby. They come away with the victory.